This was my first time teaching in a gallery, and the experience is much different than in the classroom. I noticed that the students were a little bit more serious and focused in the gallery than I think at school. Even though there are a lot of distractions here, I think that the essence of the gallery is very calm and, and focused, and I noticed them calm and focused as well. Also, it's that sense of something special, that this is the piece right here. Like, please don't touch it, but it's right here. And you can't really get that when you're in the classroom, just with an image. I mean, it's powerful too, but in here it's so wonderful. So Grace, you were telling me that after you taught the lesson at the gallery using the looking five times two routine with your second graders, you brought them back here to class, and a few days later, you use the same looking five times to thinking routine with math. I found that it was a really great introduction to the math and I would love to keep trying this because I do think the same skills at the gallery of slow down and look are super applicable in math, especially with things like this or even with graphs, data, shapes, all of that. They just need to slow down and think about it, look carefully, and then they can usually figure it out all on their own. Today we're going to closely look at this piece of art behind us. The challenge is going to be to only focus on this piece of art. We are in a room filled with beautiful pieces of art, and maybe at another time we could look at those. But for today, we are only going to look at this piece. As we're closely looking, I'm going to invite row by row to come up nice and close so that you can get a nice close image of our piece of art. The rest of us, the expectation is that you're just going to be sitting closely looking at your seat. Okay, ready? The first group, why don't you come up nice and close? Okay, you can sit back down. So now we're going to do a thinking routine called looking five times two. Now I want you to think of five words that you would use to describe anything about this piece of art. When you're done with your five words, I invite you to turn it over, and with your pencil, you can sketch what you're seeing here. Okay. Ready, set, go. Now I'm going to give you a think partner and you are going to share your five words, listen to your friends' five words, and talk a little bit about why you chose those words. What are you seeing in this image that made you think of those words? In the, in the most bottom part, there's like water. Why you bought those words? Yeah. And you picked water because there's water? Yeah. Now we're going to look at this painting again. This is going to be the times two. So for this part, we are going to move to the back of the gallery to look at it in maybe a new way. We just heard from a friend, so their thinking might already have us thinking something new. Now we're going to look at it again, but further back. So you might see something new looking at it a different way. We're going to do one minute of close looking. So I want us to be thinking about how does this look different when we stepped back than when we were up close? So when you get back to your seat, I want you to tell me your thinking on the second five times two. So five new words that you would use to describe this painting. Your second job is I want you to look at all of your words and I would like you to circle your favorite. You are able to sketch on the back. I do invite you to keep glancing up at the piece of art. Keep visiting that artwork as you're writing to see if you notice something new. Okay. 
So now can everybody flip over? And I'm going to invite each of us to share that one word that is your favorite word on your five times two. And I'm going to write down all of our words so that we have one collection of our favorite words. So Anthony, can I start with you? Garden of art. Flowers. Reflect. Frog's habitat. Quiet. Calm. Beautiful. I noticed a change in my students' descriptions when we stepped back. The first time I saw them during the five times two, naming more what they were seeing. And then when they stepped back, I was getting more descriptions of the essence or the feelings that they got about the painting. Can anyone pick that one moment that you're thinking changed when looking at this painting? When I was at the front, I could see more of the um, green. And if I look closer, you could see that there's this red, um, like brown line in the water. I think it's trying to represent how the colors are changing in the water. Anthony, what do you think it is? I see like a little brown at the bottom, so I think that that's the reflection of the bridge. The colorful bee pads are very colorful, and that represents peaceful and very colorful artists. We do have a little book to hear more about the piece. This is called The Magical Garden of Claude Monet, a little Japanese bridge. We kind of documented all of the thinking from the very beginning of our experience, walked through what they did together, and the most important thing was when we got back, we reread the story again. And at the end, it said that you can actually go to the gardens right outside of Paris, and that was the point where the kids' minds were like completely blown. They were asking, well, could we go on and look at some Google Earth pictures and see somebody actually walking through the garden? And so now that's where I want to lead us, to do more of a virtual tour of the garden and see what they actually are like. So in math in second grade, we were working on two-digit plus two-digit addition with regrouping. And then this was the first time that they had seen three digit and three digit. And so I wanted them to do the same thing as the gallery, slow down, closely look at it. And so they looked at it and then over here they wrote their first five words, any words that came to them when they looked at that number sentence. And as you can see, some of them wrote difficult, numbers, three digit. And then I had them go to their second leaf, they got two. And on this one, instead of sketching the problem, I asked them, use your math strategies that you already know, pick two, and solve this. So they did it, and then we had them go back the five times two, and they wrote five new words. Meanwhile, no teaching has taken place at this time, just having them slow down and look at it. And on the second one here, which was nice to see, without any prompting, they were um, identifying what strategies of math that they use to solve it. So that's why you'll see things like traditional, you'll see partial sums. And so for me, that was really exciting as the math content teacher to see them not only using the strategy, but then for them to actually name it on the five times two, really let me know that they can not only use the strategy, but they're very aware and have a lot of um, reflective abilities to be able to say that that's what they did. And what was really exciting is through this process, a lot of them realized that they could add three digits plus three digits with regrouping without having any instruction. And some of them, after their five times two, wrote um, grateful, happy as a second word. Over here, one student wrote proud. She was really proud that she was able to solve the problem all by herself using the strategies that they already knew. There too, a couple of them wrote proud. So nice, it's so creative. I love the visual of the tree and the idea of growth and how our thinking is always growing. And it's so interesting too that they noticed some of the details of the problems, like they're writing words like number, hundreds, addition, tens, ones, but they're also feeling free to write their emotions about this problem. Someone said difficult, mm -hmm. yeah. hard. And then in the second column, after they try doing the problem themselves, you see a lot of the word happy. It seems like a really inviting way 
to bring your second graders into a new concept about math. I think in first and second grade, especially in the elementary years, our job is, yes, to teach the math content, but we're also establishing the disposition of, I like math, I can do it. It's something that I'm able to, an emotional piece to it. And so to see them saying happy, proud, smart, lets me know that they're not only just doing the math, but they're feeling like they can do it. So when they go to third and fourth grade and it gets a little more difficult, they have the disposition to at least try and be able to do it. Mm -hmm.